uh, my first experience, I still remember I was probably in like third or fourth grade when I took the Muni the first time with like a friend. And it was like, you got your quarter? I got my quarter. Okay, let's go. Did you get your transfer? I got my transfer, we're good. That was equity cannabis business owner, Morris Kelly. I'm Jeff, and this is Storied San Francisco. Before we get into this episode, just a quick announcement. Our friend and past guest on the show, Chloe Jackman, over at Reclaim Collaborative, let us know about an upcoming campaign called Reclaim the Climate Narrative. It's this Thursday, April 22nd through the 28th, and it will amplify the voices of makers, farmers, and producers leading climate change solutions within supply chains. For more info, please visit www.reclaimcollaborative.com slash earth hyphen day. Okay, back to the podcast. First off, we should mention that this episode was produced with Repco, a storytelling collaborative that covers issues of racial and social justice. Morris Kelly's great-grandfather was a sharecropper who bought his own freedom. In this episode, Morris traces his lineage down through his maternal grandmother, who moved to California from East Texas. Morris's mom was raised in the sunset and went to Milwaukee for college, where she had Morris. Because of her age and the fact that she was in school, his mom sent him back to San Francisco to be raised by his grandparents. Morris shares stories from throughout his school days, many of which took place outside school grounds. He wraps up part one with his days at City College and SF State. It was around this time that he met a graduate of the Culinary Academy, and the two started making cannabis edibles. Here's Morris. Uh, the first generation of San Francisco for me would be my grandparents. Uh, okay. They made it. I know my my grandmother came in the Great Migration. Um, she's from Texas. Her father was a sharecropper who bought his own mm. freedom, mm-hmm. and um, they saved up enough money to send all the daughters to school. Wow. And once they finished school, they came out here to California to get jobs. Uh, she, they started off in San Diego working at army bases and mm. my mom I mean my grandma uh, wanted to venture a little further ended up coming up to San Francisco starting off at the YMCA and uh, you know just live that live that dream and uh, my grandfather he was in the army and he came through San Francisco uh, being in the army and uh, his exposure to San Francisco made him realize that's where he wanted to live. So as soon as I believe it was World War II was over, he relocated to San Francisco. Okay. Um, met my grandmother at church and had my mom. My mom's raised in the city. Do you know uh, what neighborhood she was raised in? Or uh, my mom was raised in the Sunset. Okay. Um, And can I back up real quickly? mm -hmm. I'm from Texas, and we have been meeting a lot of people who are like, my grandparents came out here from Texas. Do you know where your grandma was from in Texas? um, We have property outside of Marshall. Okay, East Texas. Yeah. Yeah, off I-20. Okay, cool. I wouldn't be able to tell you anything past that that no that's <laughs> that tells me where where it was and other other folks can look it up on the map but i'm always just curious because of my my mm-hmm. own roots being yeah. there um anyway so so sorry your grandparents met in church uh, yeah, and then, met at third baptist church in san francisco okay and and this is on your mom's side right yeah okay and um yeah i had my mom my mom grew up in the city uh went to school out here eventually she went off to college met my father uh they had me my mom was still in school so i was shipped back to live with my grandparents and this is just uh where i ended up so right that is kind of like i guess my san francisco lineage your lineage do you know where your dad's family came from um no i don't okay but they met here. No, so my oh. mom was in college. Oh, sorry. My mom went away to college. 
Okay. To Milwaukee, Got Wisconsin. It. Got it. Met my father. Had me in college, sent me back home to live with my grandma. And um, of course, by the time my mom was done with college, I was like, I want to stay here, San Francisco. You know, this, this is all I, you know, I didn't know anything else. So uh, luckily for, I don't know if that's right, but I, you know, uh, grew up with my grandparents mm-hmm. in San Francisco. In the sunset? Or? In the sunset, yeah. Okay, where, like, what cross streets? Uh, we were Claire, like Claremont and West Portal. Okay. Cool. So. And so you, we talked about you were born in the in the eighties, eighty four. You said right. Correct. Okay. Um, most people don't remember their birth or the first couple years, <laughs> but I have, we have run into a couple of exceptions. Do you do you recall any of those, like uh, like pre three or four years? <laughs> I just have to check. No. Okay. No pre. Th- no. Okay. So let's let's move on to like the late think, 80s and maybe do you do you remember your first memory? Um I guess like my first big memory of San Francisco is definitely like the 89 earthquake. Okay. You were you were aware and you have memories. Yeah. Like, you want to walk us through that? It was crazy cuz it was like, I I hated cleaning my room. Yeah. This was like one of the first times in life I had like actually cleaned my room myself. And I remember getting home from kindergarten, and the and the I think the baseball game was on, and then the earthquake happened. And you know, here they they told us to go run into your door door frame. So I'm in the door frame shaking, and I'm just watching my room get destroyed. Damn! And I was like, no. <laughs> Because I didn't want to clean it back up. Do, but, you, do you have anyone tell you, oh, it's your fault because you cleaned your room? <laughs> no, no, no. But uh, but the dope part is is that my, I don't know how my grandma knew this, but she took us to KFC on Terrabelle. Nice. And we ended up like just getting a bunch of free chicken because they could yeah. Like they, they just couldn't. They didn't have nothing to do with all the chicken they Right. Cooked, so. And they didn't have like cat power for the cash registers no. or anything. So. so. Okay. That is my '89 earthquake. Experience. And that's maybe your first memory that you that you still have now. That's like, that's probably like my largest. Yeah, you're like five-ish, yeah. around five. I mean, there's like memories here and there, but that's like probably my first big experience in life. Right. That's a I'd big. Say. That's a big one. <laughs> <laughs> Good marker too. You're like, I know exactly when that happened. Did you ever clean your room again after that? I mean, I tried, but never that. Never that good. Right. <laughs> uh, so, actually, five is, I, I, for, for a lot of folks, is like right when you start going to school, right? Mm-hmm. Were, you, were you going to school already? Yeah, that's what I was saying. I just... Oh, you got home got from school home that from day? kindergarten. Yeah. Okay. Where did you go to school? You want to name uh, drop some schools real fast? So, I was at West Portal Elementary. Okay. And then I went to uh, Herbert Hoover Middle School. Um... I went to a private school called S.R. Martin for a little bit. Mm -hmm. I was, I guess, school was fun back then. So I don't think I put much emphasis on school. So uh, at Hoover, it was just a little too much fun. And Mm -hmm. my grandma wasn't having it. So she tried private school with me the next year, which was S.R. Martin. And that wasn't no fun for me, so I wasn't having it. And then was it more school? <coughs> school. It was like a super small school, mm. you know. Like I think my class size was like six, mm. you know. And it was just like, yeah, definitely a lot of school. They could see you more. Yeah, it was. <laughs> it was intense. Yeah. Great school, but I just wasn't ready for it. Yeah. I wasn't. Like, if I had the mindset now, I was like, damn, you're an idiot. Yeah. Like, <laughs> but, um, so, uh, after there, I went to McAteer. Okay. Um, I went to Urban Pioneers. And then I went, did a little bit of City College and a little bit of SF State. Do you want to tell us anywhere between your age five and, let's say, you know, like the end of high school or so, what was the city like back then? So we're talking pretty much 90s. So yeah. riding around being young with my grandparents, I guess like you notice the regular things like there was more bakeries that you went to, right? There was more like fresh 
produce places. There was like a lot of more like smaller stores everywhere. Markets and uh-huh. stuff like that. Yeah. Um, there was like, you know, like I used to go buy my church suits at Seagulls on mission. Oh yeah. Right. Like uh, there were these. R.I.P. Like, Seagulls. Yeah. They were I used like, to buy my fast passes there. Well, see what I mean? They're like these iconic staples of the city that yeah. like if you grew like Kaplan's on <laughs> market, that's where I went and got all my baseball caps because they were twenty dollars. Right. Like, so. <clears throat> There was definitely a lot more of a small town feel, I guess you'd say. Yeah, and the chains were, were all out at Stonestown, mm-hmm. right? That's where if you wanted a chain or a big box store, yeah, you would, yeah, you would go to the mall. But yeah. everything else was really some mom and pop. Yeah, um, you had places like Woolsworth. Yeah, but I don't remember any other like too many other commercial businesses. Right. Or not commercial, but corporate, I guess you would say. Like ch- chains. Chains, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you remember, as a kid, like, uh, going, exploring other neighborhoods or anything like that? I think... Or did you just pretty much stick to the, your neighborhood? Oh, no. Okay. The city was fun. How'd you get around? So, the bus. Uh, my first experience, I still remember, I was probably in, like, third or fourth grade when I took the Muni the first time with, like, a friend. And it was like, you got your quarter? I got my quarter. Okay, right. let's go. Did you get your transfer? I got my transfer. We're good. And, like, we went to McLaren Park because he knew he lived in Excelsior, so mm-hmm. he knew where the uh, the reservoir was there. Mm-hmm. And there was tadpoles and frogs to catch. Okay. So we would catch the bus there to go hang out in his neighborhood. Or we would take the L all the way down to the beach to go to the beach and hang out, you know, just play in the waves after school, in elementary school. We had, like, we were supposed to be in after school care, but, like, it was like nobody really checks on you, and as long as you make it back, (laughs) you know, we realized that we could go do, you know, I mean, it was, I guess it was, like, our own little adventures then. Right on. So, um... Wait, the the ocean wasn't too cold for y'all? Are you just fearless kids kind of thing? I think back then it was just, like, roll up your pants legs and try not to get hit. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So... It was just like, uh, you know, hurry up and get away. But <laughs> we didn't, yeah, you're little. You don't think about cold. You're jumping in the puddles. Totally. You're like, you're not thinking about any of that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, and then, let me see, middle school, you know, you start adventuring around the city. Like, uh, you had arcades in the city mm-hmm. back then. Mm-hmm. So, like, if we went to Chinatown, like, you know, Broadway had an arcade. Chinatown used to be able to go there and get, like, firecrackers. I remember little old men with fake newsstands being there, and, you know, you'd go up and say the magic words, and they'd unveil, like, that there was no newspapers there, and it was all fireworks. Love it. Um, Going to Chinatown to get weapons. Like, yeah. just to be cool, like, you know how to use a butterfly knife? Yeah. I know how to use a butterfly knife. Yep. And, um, yeah, like, the movie theater on Market Street, St. Francis. Okay. You used to be able to see, like, two movies for two bucks. Okay. Um, they also had, like, another pool hall, an arcade on Market. Mm-hmm. Then you had, like, the arcade in Fisherman's Wharf. So, yeah, I guess mm-hmm. it's like a little kid. With a couple bucks, we were just like running Fucking around. Dreamland, like a playground. Yeah, yeah, definitely. that's fun. And I never heard that story about the. Uh, you say the reservoir at McLaren mm-hmm. had toads and uh, tadpoles. Yeah. I never heard that, but like, like f- for kids who grow up in other places that have like creeks and lakes and stuff. That's where they go, but like, no, we have that here in the city, too, right in the middle of the fucking city. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, uh, so y- y'all were pretty much, you and your friends were getting around on Muni for the most part. Yeah. Especially, like, way over on the other side of town. <coughs> yeah. I didn't, I probably didn't have my first car until I was 18. Right. 17, 18. Yeah. So, yeah, until then, and then, you know, grow, I did graffiti in the city, so... That was like, I was a bus hopper, so that was like mainly what I was doing when I was doing graffiti was tagging on buses. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and then the city, it was like built on, uh, I feel like the city was built for you to be able to get around on public transportation. Right. So, there was like a lot of working people, there was 
a lot of people moving to and fro through the city. So it was, yeah, you could get anywhere on Muni. So in, in summary, fun place to grow up. I mean, it was, I guess it's fun. And it's fun except for when it's raining. Right. 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 That's the only time you can't really be outside. Yeah, which and that doesn't happen too much here. So I mean, it's not like Seattle or anything. No. Do you actually? Um, it just occurred to me. Do you do you remember your first time to leave San Francisco and come back? Like your your first time to like see what the contrast to see how San Francisco was different than other places. Well, with my mom living in Milwaukee, when I would go visit her, you know what I mean. I'd see Milwaukee. I didn't really think anything different, mm-hmm. um, but. Traveling with my grandparents, uh, they were part of the National Baptist Convention. Mm -hmm. So there would be different conventions around the United States every year. And a lot of times they were in historical uh, places in the South. So um, from that aspect, having to like, having to learn how to conduct yourself and why you need to do it, I learned that like firsthand. Like I was at like, the church that was bombed in like 1964 in like Mobile. Okay. That four little black girls got murdered, you know? Right. Like, so I was at these places as a youth, as like a young kid, getting this stuff like kind of poured into me mm-hmm. from like my grandma and my grandpa, who like my grandma was, her father was born a slave. So it was right. like super close. And, you know, they definitely had that trauma of having to live during that time so a lot of the things that they instilled on me were to make sure that like I would be able to be all right right like like she wanted me to learn how to play the piano because if anything ever happened to me I could go play the piano somewhere and you know get a paycheck right she yeah didn't I was born left hand she switched me to right because you know being left hand you weren't seen the same like so there was just like a lot of old school old school value and tutelage Mm -hmm. that was you know they had that i am definitely thankful for right on um did you have any siblings growing up so i did not have any here but in milwaukee i do have my father had another son and another daughter that's my brother and sister out there okay uh, but growing up here i was a single child and i don't they didn't come around until I was like 12, 13. So right. like, yeah, they were just, and then even then they were little, so. And they, did they, and they still lived in Milwaukee? Yeah, they lived there. So, okay. you know, I loved going back there and visiting them and hanging out. Yeah. It was definitely like the part of life I didn't have here. Right. When you went on those trips, either to Milwaukee or, or to the South for those conventions, do you remember coming back to San Francisco and what, what that felt like? Well, it didn't. It never really felt too different because then San Fran- San Francisco used to be like a super melting pot. Mm. So like, even though I grew up in the Sunset, my school West Portal, it had kids from every part of the city bust into mm. it. So okay. like, there was an intent effort on like people integrating and like getting to know people who weren't like. I, like it's weird to th- talk about it now, but like. It was so spot on what they were doing then. Like, I remember having kids from like Hunters Point at my school. There's a Chinese immersion program, and then now you have kids from all colors like learning how to speak Mandarin. Right. Right. And like. And not just in Chinatown. Yeah, not just in. This was at like, a, for lack of better words, it would have te- like when my mom was going to school. It was an all white school, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And it was like my mom was probably like the only black kid there, like. Was this at McAteer? No, or? this is at, like, West Portal. Oh, West Portal. Okay, got school. it. Got it, got it. Yeah, by the time she got to high school, I think things were things were a lot different. Right. But, you know, there was a, you got it like, that time span when things changed. Mm-hmm. It was very short mm-hmm. to where... Because um, it's before, if I'm, if I'm correct and whatever, but uh, it was before, like, charter schools and all that yeah, shit, so like, like de- desegregation. So this was probably, like, my mom was in... West Portal, because I was born in 84, she was probably like 20, so 20 years before that was 64, so yeah. you gotta imagine she was in, segregation. she was like in 70, totally. you know what I mean, yeah, so yeah. that shit was rough, Right. so 
like I know like my first story of my mom in school is like my gra- like my grandpa getting a call because like my gr- my mom's light skin too so mm-hmm. like they were trying to wash her skin because but they're all little girls they right. you know what I mean it's just like they're like in first first grade they don't know any Damn. better you yeah, know what I mean yeah. and it's just like but that's the world that you know that is not so far removed right right so yeah, I don't even know where we how we got there, but yeah, we got there though. <laughs> no, thank you for sharing. That's that's intense stuff. Um, any other things you want to talk about from your probably like high, you know, later school years before you started doing like city college and SF State? Um, high school was super fun. Got to Macateer. Uh, didn't do too good in school. Found urban pioneers which was a program on the, it's another school on that school's campus okay yeah I, when you had mentioned that earlier I'd, I'd never heard of that um it was a like outdoor a wilderness school so okay we would go backpacking uh two weeks out of the semester nice. they'd literally like give us a map and a compass and everything we needed for the two weeks and we'd be on our way the first week we would have like uh guides with us to make sure we'd be able to survive right and then the last uh the last week we would be out there on our own wow so that was like where did y'all go uh we had two trips we did one in stanislaus Mm -hmm. uh for like so stanislaus would be this time of year Mm -hmm. uh this semester it's you know spring it's warm and uh that's like the mid sierras right above yosemite but like right below half dome Mm -hmm. And uh, the other semester during the year, we would be down in Southern California at Los Padres Natural National Forest. Wow! So that was uh, that definitely got me through high school. <laughs> so you dug that stuff? Oh, I loved it. It yeah. wasn't you know I didn't have to. I didn't. Have, I mean we we went to class, but it was like half of the semester we did uh, an internship where we wouldn't intern at some place that like we wanted to learn how to work there be there and then the other half we did uh community service so we did community work in the community and then um in between all that we had opportunities to take like inner city kids backpacking with the pal so which is basically the police uh uh what are the synonym well, it's basically the it's a police pro, re, program ran by the police where police officers take inner city kids backpacking. So we would be like the mediaries between, you know, the police officers and the kids. Mm-hmm. Um, we ran ropes courses in the city. We ran um, camp counselors at CYO camp. And so like it just gave me all types of actual fun stuff I like to do. I like to be work with kids. I, you know, I like to work in the community it's still something that's like a major part of sf roots to this day Mm -hmm. and like yeah i guess just even going through this i'm like damn i guess this is where i get it from and a lot of outdoor time too right yeah definitely nobody wants to be in a classroom stuff you read a book i'd rather you know (laughs) yeah silver lining to the pandemic too right we're all outside Mm -hmm. a little more and being and and appreciating being outside um okay cool so so after you graduated did, I'm assuming you graduated from high school. I got, I got a G, I got my GED when okay. I was seventeen. Oh shit, early. Yeah. <laughs> like, let me take that test, peace, y'all. Yeah. yeah. I ran into some troubles and was like, uh, <laughs> how could I? I didn't want to go to school at juvie, and I was like, what can I do? Right. How about I finish school? And <laughs> luckily, all these suckers, like <laughs> I was able to study and uh, get through the test, and then uh, started goofing off over at City College. <laughs> okay, how? Uh, what kind of goofing off? Like, what? What? Were you serious enough oh, to you like? Oh, I, I'll take this class. So, right. yes and no. Okay. I guess my first semester there, I took like all classes I should be taking, but it was still felt like high school because mm-hmm. everybody else, everybody from high school is at city at this point. So right. I was like, "Hey, you want to go smoke? You want to go do this?" <laughs> and like now, there's like really nobody. Else. Like, yeah, man, yeah. let's go. So that was, you know, a wake up call, and 
then like my next semester there it was just like <laughs> we were just like hustling books you know so like now I'm like taking classes I have no reason to be in just to like meet people to sell these books to and <laughs> was that was that the beginning of your entrepreneurship no I mean no, that, went, that went way back <laughs> yeah before then we were always like selling something collecting cans yeah it was always like some little mission mm -hmm. to make money yeah, yeah. it's like I think the collecting cans one was like my first wake up call yeah I was like wait a second you mean you know, I'm like going with my, I'm like, Grandma, why are you saving all these cans? She's like, I'll show you. <laughs> you know, and then now all of a sudden I got my own can pile, you know, I'm going out and getting cans. Um, and that was like probably my first, my first little real experience. Do you remember where you took him to get Oh, cash? we used to take him to the Fillmore, the Safeway in the Fillmore district. The one on Market? No. Or, uh, oh, the one on Webster and Gary. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, right there. Yeah, I remember the uh, Safeway on Market and Church had they had one as well. Okay. But yeah. Yeah. No. So. Yeah, that was that was my first little when I got bit by the hustling bug. Yeah. Turned it nothing into something. Yeah. Hey, I mean, it's just money sitting there. <laughs> Definitely. Um. Okay. So so would you say your your time at City College, however long it was, was like, you you weren't like serious about. It. No. Yeah. And what about SF State? By the time I made it to SF State, I was a little bit serious. So I knew not to take a lot of classes. <laughs> you know, I knew to take maybe one or two that I knew I could make and pass. Mm -hmm. So that got me into a position to where I started knocking out, you know, I'd take two, three classes a semester. And then I'd have, you know, all right, well, now I got some credits and... I had met a, I was like, it, I was at State goofing off one day because they had an arcade there. Mm. And somebody came to me and was like, hey, you want to come to State? And I was like, huh? And they brought me to this program called Project Rebound. Um, and at that time, I had already had a felony case. Um, uh, I believe it was like a marijuana conviction mm. on my record. And... Um, they had a path line for people with convictions to get into state and I was like in just the right mindset enough that like all right you know if I take one class at state two classes at city I can you know balance this out and then I'll be going to both schools right and um, so yeah that worked for a little bit and but of course I don't know what I was doing this semester but something happened I, and my probation got revoked and I had to go do probably like 30 or 60 days in jail mm. that finish that semester and then, you know, get out, try it again. And um, in between all this time, I was dabbling in cannabis, you know, trying to figure out how to sell legal cannabis at the time mm -hmm. through delivery services. We were already selling cannabis, so it was like the next step was like one of the friends was like, hey, you know, we can get a, a legal license if you go pay Joe Smo attorney and he'll do all the paperwork for you. Like, what? For real? And, and we'll be safe? So, um, so, yeah, that spun me down like a hole. And then also uh, when we got out of when I got out of high school, I had a friend who probably like a year later graduated culinary school yeah. and we started making edibles oh, shit. and selling them to the local dispensaries that was morris kelly please join us this thursday for part two and the continuation of morris's story including how he started sf roots his equity cannabis company Music for the podcast was produced, performed, and curated by Otis McDonald. Original photography is by Michelle Kilfeather. Aaron Lim of Bitch Talk Podcast is our contributing producer. And the show is produced and hosted by me, Jeff Hunt. Now in our fourth season, we have more than 150 episodes available on our website, storiedsf.com, or wherever you listen to podcasts. If you can... Subscribe, rate, and review our show so we can reach even more folks. 
And if you'd like to drop us an old-fashioned email, we'd love that. The address is storiedsf at gmail.com. Thanks for listening. Stay safe, stay strong, stay healthy, and we'll see you next time. This podcast is a proud member of the BFF.FM podcast network. Learn more at podcast.bff.fm. BFF.FM, best frequencies forever.